看今天的汉天新闻，我是施方源。首先来看美国国内消息。日前，美国总统川普面对媒体发言，内容包括民众最为关心的控枪问题以及美国未来的经济形势。他承认正在考虑再次改革美国个人收入所得税的计算办法。President Trump is ripping into forecasts from economists that the U.S. could be headed toward a recession. I think the word recession is a word that's inappropriate because it's just a word that the uh, the certain people I'm going to be kind certain people in the media are trying to build up because they'd love to see a recession. Still, the president revealed he's considering some proposals to boost the U.S. economy. Including a payroll tax cut. Payroll tax is something that we think about, and a lot of people would like to see that, and that very much affects the working, the workers of of our country, and we have a lot of workers. I've been thinking about payroll taxes for a long time. Whether or not we do it now or not is,、uh, uh, it's not being done because of recession. But the president contradicted his own aides, who had just batted down the idea a few hours earlier in the day. Payroll tax cut being considered. Uh, it's not being considered at this time. Mr. Trump is still touting the U.S. economy as the best in the world, but there are signs of possible trouble. U.S. Steel announced up to 200 temporary layoffs in the critical battleground state of Michigan. That news came less than a week after the president said the steel industry was humming along. We're doing steel. Steel industry is hot. The steel. They were dumping steel all over. They were destroying our companies. U.S. Steel now, all of them. They're all expanding. The steel industry is back. It's doing great. On gun control, the president also seemed to downplay the need for tighter background checks. Sources tell CNN the president has soured on the idea of new gun laws after talking with lawmakers in the NRA. We are in very meaningful discussions with the Democrats, and I think the Republicans are very unified.、Uh, we are very strong in our Second Amendment. The Democrats are not strong at all in the Second Amendment, and we have to be very careful about that. You know, they call it the slippery slope, and all of a sudden everything gets taken away. We're not going to let that happen. But listen to what the president said earlier this month when he claimed he didn't agree with the notion of a slippery slope, an NRA talking point. NRA has over the years taken a very, very tough stance on everything, and I understand it. You know, it's a slippery slope. They think you approve one thing, and that leads to a lot of bad things. I don't agree with that. The president also attacked Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, who gave a tearful rebuke of Israel's decision to ban the Michigan Democrat, along with Minnesota Representative Ilhan Omar, tweeting, "I don't buy Tlaib's tears. I have watched her violence, craziness, and most importantly, words for far too long. Now tears. She hates Israel and all Jewish people. She is an anti-Semite." All of a sudden, she starts with tears, tears, and I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a second.、And、I think any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat,、uh, I think it shows either a total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty. And just days away from the next G7 summit, the president resurrected his own talk of allowing Russia back in after the group of world powers gave Moscow the boot over its annexation of Crimea. We're talking about Russia because I've gone to numerous G7 meetings, and、uh, I guess President Obama. Because、uh, Putin outsmarted him, President Obama thought it wasn't a good thing to have Russia in, so he wanted Russia out. But I think it's much more appropriate to have Russia in. It- 美国钢铁公司指出，未来数周内，该公司将暂时裁掉位于密西根州的数百名员工。这一举动引发了人们对于美国总统川普不久前关于国内钢铁行业复苏的言论的质疑。川普上周刚刚表示，对外国进口产品征收百分之二十五关税的举措拯救了钢铁企业。Scranton, Pennsylvania, home to the sitcom The Office, the birthplace of Joe Biden. In a state where white working-class voters helped propel Donald Trump to victory, and if he hopes to win again, Trump's chances may hinge on those same voters and the economy. So I'm here asking people, how is the economy? And I'm getting two very different answers. Yeah, I think things are definitely good. There's more jobs in the area.、Uh, the stock market's really high. I think we're on the verge of a recession. I quickly pick up on a theme. How are you feeling about the economy? I'm feeling optimistic. So, if I asked you, 
How's the economy? You say? Have some concerns. How people view the economy here is directly related to how they see the president. Jessica Stotsman owns Diskin Saloon, and she's a huge Trump fan. And did you like the fact he was a businessman? And yes. Yeah. Yes, that was one of the biggest things. Um, I feel the country has become like a business. Criminal defense attorney Paul Walker is definitely not for Trump, and he sees trouble ahead. And if this economy turns like I think it's going to, then it's going to turn on him. Scranton's a factory town. Nationally, manufacturing jobs numbers are the highest they've been in a decade, according to the Department of Labor. But there are signs hiring and production are slowing. Bad news for manufacturing workers, a key part of the president's base. People like Trump voter Douglas Waltrip, an electrician. Economic forecasts suggest dark clouds, but he sees only sunshine where he works. We got more work than we know what to do with right now. Really? Yes. I ask another key question. Would voters stick with the president if the economy turns negative? Union Rep Joe Labaranti, a Democrat who voted for Hillary Clinton, doesn't think so. We're on a high right now, and if we, we go belly up, I think it's going to be a big, big difference. While Trump voters say even if the economy turns bad, they would still back the president. Right now, yes. Would you vote different? Not necessarily, because I think the economy is always up and down. 虽然选民对美国前副总统乔拜登的年龄以及他有时口无遮拦存在担忧，但一些民主党人质疑他是否会是明年与唐纳德·川普总统对决的最佳参选人。但日前最新的民意调查显示，他的支持率还是大幅度领先其他候选人。Joe Biden back on the campaign trail in Iowa, holding on to his status as the Democratic frontrunner. Biden's electability factor at the center of his pitch in the first TV ad of his campaign hitting Iowa airwaves today. We have to beat Donald Trump. And all the polls agree Joe Biden is the strongest Democrat to do the job. No one is more qualified. His wife, Jill Biden, stressing a similar message in New Hampshire as she spoke to a group of teachers not necessarily committed to her husband's candidacy. Your candidate might be better on, I don't know, health care than Joe is. But you've got to look at who's going to win this election. And maybe you have to swallow a little bit and say, OK, I sort of personally like so and so better. But your bottom line has to be that we have to beat Trump. The electability push comes as a new CNN national poll shows the majority of Democratic voters want a candidate with the best chance of beating President Trump, while 39 percent say it's more important for a candidate to share their views on issues. In the overall race, the new CNN survey has Biden maintaining his perch at the top of the Democratic field. The former vice president with a double-digit lead over his rivals, as Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren battle it out for second place. Pete Buttigieg and Kamala Harris both coming in at 5 percent, marking a 12-point dip for the California senator since June. Warren today honing in on the issue of criminal justice, releasing a plan that would repeal the 1994 crime bill, a measure Biden helped write. It's a direct criticism of a bill that has been very harmful to millions of people. We need to correct that mistake. 美国国务卿蓬佩奥在最近五角大楼的一份报告中，面临着尖锐的质问。他针对恐怖组织伊斯兰国 （ISIS） 最近的局势发展进行了汇报，称不得不对 ISIS 的卷土重来、死灰复燃做好准备。There are growing concerns about the resurgence of ISIS in the wake of a deadly attack by the terror group on a wedding party in Afghanistan. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo seems to be downplaying the risk. We executed a plan uh, with 80 other countries to defeat ISIS. We were very successful. Pompeo told CBS News that campaigns against ISIS wiped away most of the group's physical boundaries. What we've always said is the caliphate's been gone and that there's always risk that there'll be a resurgence, not just from ISIS. But a Pentagon inspector general's report issued earlier this month indicates the risk is already a reality. It shows ISIS is deepening its hold on Iraq and resurging in Syria, a troubling development since President Donald Trump announced a drawdown of U.S. forces in Syria. 
Rear Admiral John Kirby, CNN military and diplomatic analyst, says the report is clear. It means that, the, that ISIS remains a, a viable terrorist network. A camp near the border with Iraq, which houses tens of thousands of people displaced by violence, is especially vulnerable. The report points out as troops head home, monitoring the camp is difficult. ISIS views the displaced Syrians there as potential new recruits. And the terror group's ideology is spreading fast. There's virtually no security. As a matter of fact, uh, ISIS uh, elements inside that camp are in fact providing security. In Washington, Whitney Wild. 随着天气的炎热，动物们的活动也变得活跃起来。不久前，加州警方就接到报警，并及时在居民的房屋内营救了两名差点被狗熊袭击的青少年。专家提醒民众，这一季节要特别注意关好门窗，防止动物闯入家